Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to create a bunch of crops in a field. These crops are all defined by a spline setting their borders, and the alignment of the rows is controlled via a variable. So you can rotate them at will to match whatever crop pattern you want. All right, let's start off by creating a blueprint. I'll call it BP underscore crops tutorial, and I'll also create a PCG graph, PCG underscore crops tutorial. Open up the blueprint. And in the blueprint, you're going to need a spline. And I'm going to add a PCG component. And in the content browser, I'll make sure that crops are selected and just click the arrow next to the graph in the PCG component. And there we go. Let me modify the spline a little bit. I'm going to expand it and make it closed loop just to make it a little easier to work with to start. And check closed loop here. And then I'm going to add one variable and that is the thing that allows me to control the rotation. I'll call it a rotator and I'll make it a rotator and I'll expose it. Compile, save, and we're done with the blueprint. So we can drag the blueprint out into the world. And I'm going to make this a little larger. There we go. Now in the PCG graph, we need to do a few things. First, we need to get the spline. So let's start with that. Use a get spline data node followed by a spline sampler. The get spline data is going to be set to self, and the spline sampler is going to be set to distance on interior. And leave the sample spacing fairly small. 100 seems to work pretty well, because we're going to need these interior samples to line up with the grid, which we are creating separately. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because we can't rotate the spline separately. If we try to do any rotation on the spline, either we're rotating the individual points within it, or we are rotating the entirety of the spline, which means it no longer aligns to the spline itself. So instead, I'm going to get actor data and set it to self and single point. Then I'm going to create a points grid. This points grid is going to control the layout of the crops. I'm going to set cell size to 100 by 400, and that means that every 100 units there will be a plant, and on the other axis, every 400 units there will be a row, and I think that will create a nice crop grid. Uncheck cold points outside volume. And now for the actor data, let's go ahead and copy points. Actor data is the target, and the create points grid is the source, which means we're going to copy the grid that we've created over to the actor data point. Now, if we debug this, we don't see anything. Let's change it to absolute. There we go. So we have two rows. So what I need to do is actually expand this whole thing so it covers the entirety of this spline. So to do that, I can update the points grid and set the grid extents to, let's say, 25,000 by 25,000. And that's a little too big. So let's make it 7,500 by 7,500. Now we can see that the spline has a grid everywhere inside of it. So now I can use an intersection node. And this is going to keep points that overlap between the two sources and discard all the rest. So if I debug this, and let's change it again to absolute. There we go, we have a nice grid. So now there isn't much more to it, just a projection node. And let's find the in node, input. I'll project the landscape onto it because I want the soil to rotate with the land. And now I can make the soil. I'll start with a transform points that we'll use later, followed by a static mesh spawner. I will add a mesh entry. For this, I'm just using some forced terrain from Quixel Bridge. It looked vaguely like soil. 
and let me spawn the plants as well. And I'm just going to use castor oil plants for this one. So the plants I want to rotate randomly. So we'll use a transform points node to set rotation from 0 to 360. Okay, so the plants are rotating, but the soil is rotated off. That's because the soil is longer than it is wide, so I just need to rotate it 90 degrees. Rotation min 90, max 90, and it lines up. And so there's one more thing, though. The plants are tilting with the landscape. There we go. So I want the plants to go straight up and down instead of rotating with the landscape. So for that, I can go into the Transform Points node for the plant and check Absolute Rotation, which will set the X and Y rotation to zero. There we go. The plants are aligned, and we have our rows of crops. Last, we need to set up this rotator to actually work, since it's not doing anything right now. So for that, I can add a Transform Points right here on the actor data, which is serving as the basis for the points grid. And now if I hook this up, I can control the rotation right in this transform points node. No rotation, and 45, 45, and it's rotated. So all I have to do is set the rotation min and max via the actor property. Now I named it rotator, so I can get actor property, change the actor filter to self, and add the property name rotator. And output can be rotator as well. And next, I just uh, plug this into rotation min and rotation max, because I want the rotation to be absolute. I don't want it to randomly rotate within a range. And now I can control it via this attribute. And there we go. Let's turn this debug off. And we've got our crops. All right. Pretty easy to handle. I hope you do some cool things with it.